what a fine day for science! Okay, well, while certain neighbor's music is going, hmm, 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 I thought I'd do a video about this. This mess. Now, originally, I wasn't going to do a video about this because I didn't think it would be very interesting. All I'm doing here is I found this in my shed and I'm just attaching new wires onto it because the original owner cut the original wires off. And when I opened this, I could not believe just how cheaply this is made. I mean, this speaker here, um, this is what they laughably call a subwoofer. I don't even know if that's four or eight ohms. Doesn't, doesn't even say. Doesn't say the ohms, doesn't say the wattage, anything. And just look at this amplifier board. Is this an amplifier or is this a joke? So, these are what's doing the amplifying. I've got this big chip here for the big speaker, obviously. And this little chip here for the two other speakers, you know, the two little speakers. There is stuff on the other side. Well, what kind of wattage is that? Five watts at the most, maybe? I thought at first this might be a Class D board, but there's no coils or anything like that, so it's obviously not one of those. From what I could find out by poking around with my multimeter, this output to this speaker, that is bridged. This one isn't. Even more surprising is the power supply this thing uses. Now, on a thing like this, you would expect it to use a small linear power supply, right? Nope. They went for a switch mode power supply. And not just any switch mode power supply, but the kind of switch mode power supply you'd see in a Walwart. And even more so, this looks like a project somebody had together. This is not what I did. This is... This is how I got it. Okay, well, the new mains wire is in. Now I've got to work out this jumble of wires. So, we have left, ground, right, and most curiously, standby. Now, I don't know if that needs to be tied high or tied low in order for this thing to function, so that's going to be fun finding out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just completely remove this wire like I completely removed the original mains wire and just wire up the right, left and um, ground wires. And for the standby, I'm just going to hardwire that either high or low, depending on what it needs to be. I have now replaced the audio wire. Now, normally I would do a more professional job, but since I'm not really serious about getting this working again or not, it's just... I've just done it this way. Tacking on the, um, the new wire onto the old wires. Now, I've got the meter connected across the power supply's power rails, so I've got the red connected there, hopefully that's making a good connection. And I've got the white connected to the ground, so when I plug this in, if we get about 9 volts on the meter, we'll know the power supply is good. And hopefully nothing will go bang. Oh. Right, let's plug it in. Any signs of life? Nothing. Oh, no, wait, here we are. 9 volts. 9.16 volts. Well, that's about where it needs to be. And of course, another thing just randomly falls over. Next thing I want to do is I want to measure what's coming out of the standby wire. If we've got any voltage coming out of there. So I'll plug this in again and we'll see what we've got. Alright, well, we've got 5 volts coming out of that, which is pretty much what I would expect. Don't know if there's much current behind that. So we definitely need to tie that to ground if we want this thing to come on. Or at least, I think so. Okay, so it's been about six months. I know for you watching at home, this would look almost instantaneous, but I left this for a while. I was going to come back to it. So I'll come back to it tomorrow. Then the next day I said, I'll come back to it tomorrow. And eventually it just all added up to, well, me not doing anything with this. So, anyway, what I tried in order to make this work 
is we've got the standby wire here and I measured that and it's 5 volts and it does appear to be current limited so leaving this at 5 volts it does nothing if I connect this to the ground the speaker flutters for a second and then does nothing so I reckon we need a specific amount of resistance between here and the ground to get the voltage at a certain level I don't know what it needs to be but what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a variable resistor between here and here and also have my meter me measuring the voltage and I think when we hit a specific voltage at this wire this thing will come on and to be extra safe make sure I don't blow anything up this is going to be the power source. Right, so we're all set up and ready. So I've got a 50 kilo ohm variable resistor, or potentiometer, whatever you want to call it. So I've got one a pin on there connected to the 5 volt, the middle pin's connected to the ground, and the other pin's not connected to anything. I've got my voltmeter connected as well, so we can measure what the voltage at this wire is when it actually, you know, activates. And now I'm going to connect up the battery. And, okay, we've got 4 volts. Now I heard a little out the speaker there, so I don't know. Maybe it's... Maybe that's all we need to make it activate? Just touching the signal wire. Keep hearing a buzz. Alright, I'm going to keep lowering this. I've had a little bit of a think, and I think this amplifier is working, but I think what's stopping this working is the fact that I just don't have anything plugged into the external speaker jack, and um, looking at this uh, socket, I can see some extra pins there that would be used to sense whether there's, you know, anything plugged in. Well, it looks that way, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug a dummy connector in there, you know, not go into anything, but just, you know, just the connector itself. See? if that makes this thing come to life. So, I've got a little thing plugged into there. Nothing's connected to the other end. I do have the speakers that went with this, but they've gone walkabout. I've no idea where they are. I've checked my room out. I've checked the shed out. I know they're somewhere, but I just don't know what I've done with them. Anyway, so I'm going to set this to its maximum resistance again. And plug this, plug the battery in. Maybe we'll get something this time. Okay, still nothing out of there. Let's drop the voltage down a little bit. Still nothing. Yeah, this is not looking good. I'm not getting any signs of life out of this. Okay. One final thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to disconnect all of this. And I'm just going to try directly having it floating, you know, at 5 volts and then short it to ground. If that doesn't do anything, then I'm just going to give up with this. This is obviously defective. So, nothing connected. No response when I touch the signal wire. See how the speaker just went up there. Let's see if we get anything now. Mm, still nothing. Well, that's it, this video's a lost cause, it's not one of the ones that's going to get edited. That was a complete waste of time.